welcome to uh, the first event for MUS 2017. Uh, and I'm Brian, I think I'm an LD. And uh, if you have any organizational problems, uh, let me know. Something happened to do at the hotel, your room, or whatever else. So we can fix those problems, I think. We have been able to the last 15 years. So uh, anyway, thanks for coming. Appreciate your participation. And uh, we'll let you contribute to the Amiga community. All yours. Thanks. All mine. All yours. <coughs> oh dear. Okay. I'll go over here for a moment. Is one of these front ports actually connected to your room? I have no guarantees of any single lap machine. That's right. Who knows which cable it is? There's one in the back that actually works. Hello. So, yeah, my, my name's Stephen Soley, in case somebody didn't know. Who? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't. There's always a joker in every class. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, first things first, um, we are recording this event, right? So if there's anything you, you're going to say that you don't want recorded, you turn around and you say, Robert, pause it, or something like that, right? Robert's a, our camera person. So please, if you, if you have some uh, corporate secrets or uh, you want to bash somebody, <laughs> say, pause please, and then we'll pause it and then uh, we'll continue after the pause, right? Just that, because we don't want to go back and edit the, the recording afterwards, it's a real pain in the butt <laughs> for our camera person, editor, and uh, publisher, and director, and whatever you want to call it. <laughs> our film crew, there you go. <laughs> film crew. <laughs> Just to let everyone know. Um, so I, this, this year, I kind of come up with a little syllabus down there, and I have a list of notes. I want to follow and, and things like that, but I don't have a step one, step two, step three kind of thing. Right? I don't know exactly what, what we're going to do first, it depends. I have, uh, I have at least one other presenter, two other presenters. Uh, Hans de Ruder will be here at some point. We'll wake up. Uh, there has been some alcohol consumed last night, so we're not sure when he'll wake up. <laughs> <laughs> And also, uh, Jamie has has promised a little demo. Hopefully, it works. Yeah. Good, good, good. At some point, we'll do that as well. And also got uh, Michael over there, who will give us a, um, a tutorial slash uh, demonstration on how he does uh, beta testing. Because I found uh, this is very useful information, even if uh, you have your own system. I think he has a pretty good system. So. <laughs> I wanted him to do something for us. I don't think Mark volunteered to do anything, and it's probably all in there anyway. But we'll, we'll deal with that tomorrow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need to get that fixed up. Um, yeah, so that, that's, so I know everybody more or less. Forgot your name again. Jerry. Jerry, there's Jerry. Jerry's one of the newest members of the SAC club. New member, <clears throat> yeah. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Amiga 3000, I really think. Yeah. Remember. Yeah, yeah. He's a kind of classic guy at the moment. And Eldie, where? Jamie. I know everybody else. <laughs> okay. Well, with that, uh, I will start at the beginning. So I think what I'll do is probably sit at my computer if everybody can hear me okay. Just so I can run around on it. Because uh, that's always a challenge. So. SDK, um, everybody knows what SDK stands for, right? <laughs> Developers. Stephen does code. Steve, what? <laughs> code, code with a K. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> very neat. Very, very neat. Do the kids still say neat? Uh, <laughs> oh, we're old. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, a while back, I. Okay, uh, just to rewind, I went to Cardiff to their developer conference in what month of that? I wasn't even drinking, I don't remember. <laughs> April? <laughs> Earlier in the year. Uh, no, this is a lot drinking. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, I was, I was there for the Aeon developer conference. And it was uh, quite a hoot. 
quite a hoot. I really enjoyed that. But one of the things that came out of that conference was our SDK is out of date, our compiler is out of date, that kind of stuff, right? And I thought, well, I'm going to go home and fix it. Well, I did for a while, and, <laughs> and then I ran out of steam. <laughs> But just to let you know, we're, our comp the compiler I'm using now is 5.4.0, whereas the old SDK is 4 or something, something, I remember, the GCC compiler. The tool suite's a little older too. But we, do, we need an updated SDK in order to target things like uh, the X5000, the E1222 upcoming, and, and so on, right? Because these new, new boards show up. And we need uh, need a way to make board spe specific uh, targets when you really want to push your performance, right? So that was one reason. The other reason was the developers were complaining the header files were out of date and didn't work in C++ anymore. Somewhere along the way, we broke it, right, that kind of thing. So I started working on it, and I got as far as I finished the Clib2. The old CLIB2 C library. I got that working again. Um, I got the shell updated, and then I ran out of time, <laughs> and real life took over. You know, full time job with real life, that kind of thing. So I haven't worked on it since. But um, if anybody wants to volunteer to help me, <laughs> I would really appreciate it. So the way I build an SDK is. I think it's in here. Where is it? Where did I put the SDK? SDK maybe. Yeah, I usually have uh, the, S the old SDK and the new SDK in the same place. And what I do is I recreate all the archives, because there's a bunch of archives of different things. Uh, like Amy SSL, for example. I have a new archive of that, which updates Amy SSL to the current level, right? But we could actually divvy up the work, and everybody could take an archive and just update it. And I, I was thinking, right, why am I doing all the work? <laughs> so, so, you know, some things like uh, Core Utils, somebody else could do, Awk. Like, there's all sorts of things that need updating. Earl, oh, well, that's handy. Uh, there's a movie, but actually, I could do that. But anyway, someone else could do it too, right? Uh, most of this stuff is all public. Right? It's not secret, it's not behind paywalls or anything. Sed, I got a new Sed version from uh, Henning. I have I still haven't used Henning Lund. He used to be very active in the scene. He sent me a brand new one. It's like, oh, came out of nowhere. It's great. Um, all sorts of things. But I could divvy up the work. So if you're interested in helping, please email me. And I will I can we can negotiate which piece you, you might want to do, right? <laughs> if anyone wants to help, please let me know, because uh, that'll help speed it up. Because what I want to do is update all the archives to something newer, right? And I want to update everything if I can. Now, you can't do something that uh, is copyrighted by Hyperion, because I have access to that. So I'll do those ones, but everything else, we, we use a lot of utilities. It all be updated. So hopefully that will help speed up the process. Now some of these utilities are on GitHub. Some of them still might be on SourceForge. Who knows, right? The, the code bases are kind of spread around a little bit. Sometimes they come with the source codes. So it really depends. Like ident, that indent utility. I don't remember what that does. I think it fixes your indentation, your source code. <laughs> I don't know, I haven't used that tool myself. Flex, that's like another one. So there's lots of stuff to fix. <laughs> so quick it, question. Yes. Uh, what's the status of uh, NewLib versus CLIB2? I mean, well, uh, they're about the same level right now in compatibility. They're, they're still at the C99 level. Okay. Yeah. They haven't been updated beyond that. They're, kinda, they're not 100% C99 compliant, but they're getting there. Well, is NewLib at this point being built as a Amiga shared library? Yes, NewLib's an Amiga shared library. Okay. However, it is based on the public domain, or not public domain, uh, Red Hat, I think, owns it. Right. Uh, NewLib. 
So what we do is take the Red Hot version, port it over to this private version, and then release that. And the private version is owned by Hyperion at the moment. So they, they're kind of controlling that, but maybe you can cut a deal and get it loosened up a little bit. Right? <laughs> well, I was wondering where the, uh, the interface XML uh, file is for building the, uh, the new lib. It, I it does not have one. There, yeah. There's no such thing. New lib's special. New lib's a C library, right? Yeah. There is no entry points. There are no entry points. But it's it, being built as a shared library. Yes. 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 So there's no public interface. There's no public interface. No. No, so you just call the functions f open. You just call f open. You don't do new lib arrow f open. Right. That doesn't happen, right? <laughs> so how does it find it? It's magic. <laughs> it's more magic. Okay. Macros, macros to hide it. Yeah. Yeah. The idea is that uh, it's it's the C library, so you shouldn't even know it exists. Right. Looks yeah. Built that's in. the idea. Yeah. Yeah, you should. So, it, to, is the you actually linking to a stub library to yeah. make it get it to the yes. shared library? Then? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Underneath the covers, yeah. it does that. Because you have to do something, right? <laughs> is there any documentation for the current functions on the that? Uh, it yeah, it's ISO C ninety nine. Is it complete? No. Okay, so. <laughs> so you need the del delta, right? Yeah, the delta is in the header files. So there's no actual documentation, it's the header files. So if you want to know if it supports a function, you do search for the function in the header files, and if it doesn't come up, it's not supported. That's how I find out. Well, I'd like to be able to take and add the documentation browser of NULA into the SDK browser. Hmm. But the SDK browser works by examining the interface XML files. Yes, see there the is interfaces. no such thing in this case, because it's the C library, Could and the documentation is the ISO documentation. That is it. Right. The only thing you get are implementation specific issues. And they're on the new lib site. Right. Anything that they did that did not comply to the standard would be documented on new lib site. So, you, so no, <laughs> there is no such thing at this point in time. So the documentation is really pretty scattered still. I mean, the SDK does not give you everything about developing the system. It's, well, it's, it gives you've got, you... You've got the wiki page for, you know, actually... You could argue it gives you as much as uh, Windows gives you for their C library. Well, yeah, but we're Where is their C better. library documentation? <laughs> Where is it? It doesn't <laughs> exist. Same thing. See? <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> All you get is a delta of what is different from the standard. That's all you get. Yeah. Same with Mac. Same with Linux. <laughs> I think we need to Except Linux gets mandated. Yes. They're nicer about it. But now someone has to sync that with ISO. So yeah. Well, maybe it'd be a start to just add a small document file in the SDK that provides links to where you find this stuff. Well. I'd love to steal the Linux the Linux docs. <laughs> yeah. The man pages. But then again, they're they're specific for whatever flavor you're on, right? Of Linux. So, yeah, there's no uh, there's no nice consolidated point. So what your tools like Autoconf do is they search the header files, right? Mm -hmm. And then they have exceptions as well that they get from somewhere. And that's how they uh, build your tools. Or build that's how they build the make file. Which then builds whatever it is, right? Yeah, that's how they dealt with it. Because the same problem occurred. Yeah. So I don't know what the solution would be, but I think I'd start with New Live, <laughs> Red Hat, and see what they have for docs. I didn't see much on there. They just said go see the ISO, <laughs> which isn't a great doc at all <laughs> no. to read. Plus, it's behind a paywall, which is really annoying. Yeah. You have to figure how to yeah. get the real one. Yeah, you have to pay for it, technically. technically. <laughs> yeah, there's so many copies. <laughs> no, yeah. It's like, well, but you're saying you never use No, it. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but that's a good point, because now in the SDK browser, I can't look up F-Open. Right. I can't look up malloc. 
Well, you, you can technically, I, I can show you how, if you have any documentation anywhere on the system. And we don't. You, you can use it to try to find it, but it won't we don't. bring it to you like that because yeah. it doesn't know it exists as part yeah. of it. So it sounds like what, what we need to do is make an interface file yes. that you could parse and then have some docs somewhere you refer to. Yeah. We need both, right? Some, yes. And the index, yeah. the final what they are, and then yeah. All you all you then. need is a you can you can mock up an interface XML file, and yeah. then you want to that's have, fine. Yeah. Then you want to have an auto doc yes. uh, of the same name, probably. Yeah. I want to say to do a couple of tweaks within the SDK browser yes. to take and find the actual documents for the, the library because not everybody names the document yeah. file the same. And this SDK that I'm working on still has no docs for the ISO C libraries. There's two of them too, right? There's CLib and NewLib. Right. CLib2. CLib2. Two. Yeah. CLib2 and NewLib are the two flavors that you can choose from. And they are different. And they are implemented differently too. So you, you can get some implementation specific behavior on CLib2 that doesn't mm -hmm. exist on NewLib and vice versa. Right. Yeah. It's not anywhere, right? You have to yeah. know. You have to. You just have to know. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's the problem. I yeah. keep looking at the SDK yes. from the standpoint of a complete novice. Yeah. And you know, it just it has so many yeah. holes. It doesn't even lead you in the right direction. Well, at least on you know when I'm working on on a Mac, you get man pages. Right? <laughs> That's something. Well, I've crossed platform all you know, yeah. cross compiling in Linux and everything. So I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm hitting on the resources, but but you don't get that implementation specific stuff. Yes. Yeah, you well, right. yeah, no, yeah. I mean, that's that's difficult. So, but so I mean, am I correct to assume yeah. that the new lib shared library is, is the preferred C library for yeah, it's the default. It's target. a default preferred. Yeah, de facto, I mean, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Where that's the de facto set is where yeah. you want to yeah. be. Yeah. So we should have some docs. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you think so? Is, well, is there anything in C lib two right now that stands out to say, well, if you're building this kind of thing, link to C lib two instead of using, you know. Ah, right, I mean, right. Where, where's the, where's the strengths and weaknesses? I mean, where's, yep. it's... I've explained this actually in the past, but I don't know if I, I wrote it down well enough in the past. Yeah. <laughs> As I said, uh, if you're porting something from Unix, Linux, whatever, yeah. use CLIP2 first, right? Don't, yeah, yeah. don't suffer with Newland because it, had, it doesn't have the facilities to do the compatibility jumps. Whereas uh, new lib's more finely tuned and faster, right? It's made to go as fast as possible, but they threw out compatibility to get it. Right. Yeah. So you're, if you're doing terminal emulation, you see, see the two, of course. But how did you know them? <laughs> as if, a if, you're, if you're writing native yeah. code from scratch, yes. you know, yes. it's okay. I mean, yeah. You just need to know what's there. Yeah. Yeah. And then you fill in the gaps. But yeah. Trying to port something. Yeah, I, you know that that's kind of it was it was on my radar years back and just went, like, man, it's too it's a terrible job. Come up with all these docs. <laughs> One of the things well, that I was trying to find is the wiki can have the whole Andy found um, docs from new lib functions. And I can't remember where he got them. Well he must have got them from Red Hat. That plugs into code match. Oh, I never got it. Yeah, I never oh, got around so to there's another it. solution. Oh, yeah. Okay. Double click and it'll bring up the docs. On oh, the so so Simon's figured something out. Andy did. Andy did. I uh, yeah. I, I mean, way to go, Andy. And it was kind of like <laughs> convenient as. Well, it sounds like Andy along. should talk to Jamie. <laughs> Maybe there's something to Andy, Andy, <laughs> Andy. That saves me a hell of a lot of work, so I like it. <laughs> I'm chatting with Simon. Well, get him <laughs> online. Yeah. <laughs> And he's a Nighthawk, he's a blues guy. Um, <laughs> but uh, so it sounds like maybe someone's already found a workaround for some of this. I'm, I'm yeah, sure you Lib has something on it. Find there. the documentation and yeah. link it in. The thing is, we don't have it nice in their SDK, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The main. Sounds like uh, the next step would be for me to talk to Andy. Because <laughs> Andy knows something. Well, I'll write that down. I write my little to-do list for when I leave the show. How's that work for you? I'll just write it down quick. So, Andy has something, <laughs> and Simon's plugged into it. Too. Yeah, but Simon's. I think I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, something for. Uh, oh, 
The new newlib.l extra is included in the public archive. So it is coming. So uh, and Simon is working on finishing, wrapping up, he says, in about an hour, a new release of code. In about an hour. Well, yes. there you go. How's that for service? <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that quick enough? <laughs> no, we'll see, is that trademark in about an hour? Well, I had it yesterday, but I apparently had it on the other machine. But that would help the SDK browser well, and, and similar tools, like CodeBench is another big If they yeah. use yeah. L extra, or yeah. if yeah. people just use <coughs> CodeBench. No, no, that's a good point. Um, it's, a, it's a hole that we've had ever since the beginning. Oh, I thought. Yeah, we've had that hole forever. Is Only it, one? It's just such a terrible job to do. <laughs> so it's, it, I always go to the ISO docs first, and then I go to the man pages, and then I go to the header file. <laughs> I found this C reference book. Yeah, or those <laughs> and books. It, and it's like, yeah. yeah, it works. Sometimes those books work, work uh, better than the ISO because the ISO is written in legalese. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Standard ease, oh, right? And uh, it could be a pain because they, they talk about uh, octets instead of bytes. Why don't you say bite? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because everyone uses that, right? What? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so that's a good point. So there's another hole in the SDK that we, we would love to plug. Team, any other uh, questions about the current state of the SDK? Well, well lots of them, but I'm not going to go into it in detail. Okay, okay. Well, you, you could throw stuff at us as we go. So that's the current uh, current SDK state. So I well, apologize, it's not done. But, but technically, actually, the one we've been using is the one we're using. Yeah, the one you're using, 5330 now, yeah. which is, yeah. is fine. But it's uh, is a, the compiler tool chains out of date. That's the big big problem. What's what are the disadvantages if you use the current SDK to compile something that is to be run on the well, table? Yeah, well then your your Tabor target will will work. Like you have a new won't generic or just won't target. Run oh, it'll run, but then it's got to do emulation for some instructions that are missing and you know, that kind of stuff. Like it's it's got a kind of a half a view in it, so maybe you want to use a soft floating point for a Tabor target, perhaps, to avoid the penalties. Right, that kind of thing. Detect it and then change it. Yeah, or detect it on runtime and switch it over and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Did we find out um, which kernel actually detects the Tabor uh, problem? <laughs> no, no, I didn't find out exactly which one. Well, it brings up the other question too: is, is the update to the SDK going to include uh, stuff like the enumeration of the of the uh, Tabor in, yes. in the machine? Yes. Yes, I, I plan to put that in there. Yeah. So I have a yeah. suggestion yeah. from Simon. Okay. The auto doc format sucks rocks. Yeah, that's another problem. Yeah, I plan to talk to, to Jamie about that in private. <laughs> it has a few weaknesses. Because uh, it's a good idea. Anyway, yeah, I don't, don't want to talk about it now, but I have I have a plan. So anyway, I'll yeah, talk about that offline plan. because I don't want to bore it. But we do want to get rid of auto. Just to tell you, we're going to replace. Yeah, they're going to be gone. Yeah, yeah, they have to be. Yeah, replaced with something. Yes. A bit more searchable and, yes. and navigable. Uh, I've been I've been talking about that for a long time too. Yeah, it's um, has to. But um, I I know how to do it. I just got to do it. Right? I don't have the resources to do it. Well, well, you have to go into the code that only you guys have access to. Actually. Yes. Yes. It's not like somebody else can go in and like start reporting. Correct. It. Correct. And I actually started writing my own converter tool. I just can't finish it. Just, I'm not a parsing guy. <laughs> I hate parsing. So I need help. <laughs> if only there was someone I could hire to parse stuff. But, huh. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk later. <laughs> Is there anything else that, uh, that you want to throw out there in terms of what will be in the update for the SDK? Well, it'll, be, it'll definitely have the X5000 target in it. Yeah. Yeah. Tabor, I'm not sure how much will be in there yet because there's a We'll see. We'll, well see. What about the documentation for actual access to interrupts for problems? I mean, are, is that actual access to interrupts? So how, how you actually find act, you know, get the interrupts? Oh, that, that add, stuff add that uh, we discussed? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's going to go on the wiki. I just haven't done it yet. That go, that's wiki stuff. All right. 
You got a little wiki here? That needs to go there, right? Well, we definitely need to put a link to the wiki in the SDK. I've, oh, just, I've searched the entire SDK and I, there's still reference. Oh, it, it's in the PDF file. <laughs> this is the root directory. Oh, it's in the PDF yes, file. Yes, yes. Oh, that explains why it's not directory. Yes. Yep. 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 It's in a PDF file. Yeah. Ah. Yes, yes. Which isn't very helpful. Uh, it's plain text reading. Anything. Yes. Well, you know, I was thinking maybe it should be in an introduction block in every auto doc. Yes. More. <laughs> and you see more, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, there's all sorts of things you should do. Yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's just a little too disjunctive. Right now. Yeah, it is. Is, you know, it is. Searching, trying to find an answer. It's like, well, I you agree. Believe this I, I had a dream that uh, <laughs> you could actually click in the, you know, the auto docs and it would go to the wiki and yeah. vice versa. Ooh, right? And the include files too. I could click on those and jump yes. around, right? Yeah. What a what a concept. Thing. <laughs> Hopefully lots of things to add. Yeah, yeah. Always lots. Always lots of things. So the thing is though, what what should we cho choose first to fix? Yeah, that's that's why I'm having trouble. What should I fix first? Right. So. <laughs> so, well, there's plenty to fix. Yeah. So right now my target is. Get the X5000 compiler up there. Fail. That's kind of like priority one mm -hmm. for me. And then, well, okay, you have that. Well, now I need to the expansion.h file so I can tell them on an X5000. Because I don't think the current one does it. Maybe it does. The well, current the, maybe it's, it's enumerated through to the, the yeah. X5000 20 and 40. Yeah. It's like 9 and 10. And then there's other pieces that are missing. But there's, if, if you look at the details uh, for like the your string of, of hardware that's in there, if you pull that info, yeah. uh, and through the, the uh, expansion, yeah. it, right? All it says is like PCI and PCIe. Oh, for that, that string yeah. that's in the region? Yeah, there's, there's nothing about the rest of the hardware. Oh, yeah, yeah, I never noticed, you know. Like this stuff, machine extensions? Yeah, yeah, machine extensions. Oh, it's that's, like, well, that's well, very short. Okay, there's a lot more in that chip. <laughs> Yeah, uh, interesting. You know, and it's just not. So how how can you, for example, I mean, how can you tell whether or not you're on a machine that has a pattern matching engine? Yep. In there because or or or, 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 or security or engine. Xena or the Xena chip. I mean, I know it's a Xena capable machine. It should yep, say that here, right? Yeah, it should be in there. Yeah, yeah. I know Lyle ran into that problem. That's why the the Xena resource doesn't work on the X5000 because uh, it has no idea what an X5000 is. Yeah. Yeah. So there's so, plenty plenty more to do. I must say. <laughs> You're right about that. Oh, good stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I should write the machine extensions down. That comes from the kernel, so. Right. It just isn't fully documented what each extension really is. Like, what are the extensions? Can I parse for them? Well, you're looking for a theme yeah. for the show. I mean, right? yeah. not, not fully documented. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> It's all fake news anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's my theme. Oh, okay, anyway, that's SDK. We got plenty to do, as, as usual. Um, now, I, I've come to the point where I thought maybe I should jump into this PCI thing, PCI base address thing. It's kind of specific for people who write uh, drivers for Amiga OS. But it was something that popped up recently with the X5000 design right. that we never had the problem before. Right? It's one of those kind of problems that just popped out. Mm. And there was also a mistake in the header file, which was discovered, PCI header file, which is kind of critical. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. So what it means is if you wrote a driver in the past and uh, your hardware board plugs into an X5000, it likely won't work. That's what it means. So because of failure to enumerate the position of the PCI, I mean, what's the? It's well, that's what I was going to get into. Yeah. Great. <laughs> so that, that's the situation, though. You see, you wrote a driver for say this machine, my Mega 1500, and taking the SII 
three one one two driver and I'm moving it over to this one. I'm plugging it into my X five thousand. It doesn't work. And what? Why doesn't it work? Okay. Well, this is why. Okay. So <laughs> this is something that popped out after uh, after much much research into what was going on, and it's. You could say it's a flaw in our API, but it's more of a flaw in usage of our API. So, I don't know who you want to call it, but. Mm -hmm. So I tried to capture what happened in one article, and it's on the wiki now. Uh, what's it under? PCI. <laughs> it's not hard. And I wrote it uh, based on some emails that were flying around on the developer list, closed developer list. So I asked. For a review of it, but nothing happened, so I just hope I didn't make a mistake. Because <laughs> I, I didn't get a review from uh, from Thomas yet, but hopefully it's all correct. Like I didn't lie intentionally, put it that way. <laughs> so if I got something wrong, oh, well, I'll, we'll fix it later. So let's just go right to the gist of it. The bars. Everyone likes the bars, right? If you're writing a driver, you love the bars. <laughs> <laughs> Base address registers. So if you're talking to anything on PCI, you need to know if your bar, where your bars are, right? And there's six bars, I was told, <laughs> from Wikipedia, I think. And uh, <laughs> access reading config space. I'm sure this is all documented in the PCI uh, official documentation as well. Perhaps. I never use it. <laughs> I, I rely on the API to hide that from me as a programmer. I say, well, I'm just going to call your function. How PCI works? I don't really care. I just want to know how to talk to the car, right? Whatever driver you're doing. So there was a, a way we were accessing it in the past, which was incorrect, to get your bars, right? So here's the subtlety. Here's the correct method. You, you call your find device, which finds the device on the PCI bus. You got your hard-coded hex numbers to find your device, whatever it is. Then you call this get resource range. Then you get your base address right here. This is the address that you use to hammer bits, right? That's your base address. And then when you're done with it, you're supposed to free. So that's the, that's the, um, the correct method. The incorrect method, very subtle change. There's only one little thing different. There's this mask applied, right? Now, every every driver I've seen so far, there's been a masking of the base address. And it's, said, oh, oh, you're not supposed to do that. Because the there's two, the way it was explained to me, there are two address spaces at work here. There's the CPU address space and the PCI address space. Two PCI, two PCI devices may have the same address in PCI space, but unique CPU addresses. That's the gist of the problem. You can't just use the base address directly. You have to be sure it is mapped to CPU space. And I'm like, well, how do I know? <laughs> how do I know, right? Well, you have to talk to the device or look at the uh, data sheet for the device and see what it says. It, it should tell you what address space it's going to use. Like your base address is either at zero or it's at some other offset. It could be shifted 16 this way, 16 that way, whatever, right? And you have to apply that here. Like you've got to go plus two or you've got to go plus something to get to the real address. And that should be in the data sheet. <laughs> so that's what I'm told. <laughs> The biggest problem I found was determining whether the implementation, like on a P5020, whether the base address for the entire machine was changed or default. The base address. Well, that's the, you're talking PCI address. But well, yeah. Well, actually, it's the the, the base uh, address for most of the system. The, 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 the well, the memory, the virtual memory address space, is divided up however you felt like it. Because that's virtual, right? And you're not dealing in physical address blocks. <laughs> right. Right? So we're talking virtual addresses. Oh. So the, the, the status, uh, what is it, the 
status configuration register base address. It, 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 there is a default for the machine. Uh, the machine itself, the CPU? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the CPU. CPU. Yeah. Yes. You're talking about, you're talking no, about I'm talking, CCI I'm bus. talking CCI bus. Right. I'm talking CPU. And not, yeah. you know, it's, it's the rest of the integrated components. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that's what I was trying to get access. Oh, the integrated components. Yeah, I explained that over the, the Skype that session when, that, when they, right. Right. yeah, those. How do you get that address? Where did that come from? Well, that came from you, Where did it come from in you, <laughs> like the man. someone chose it or they got it from the data sheet, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's where I get it. So Ultimately so I was able to determine it was this ball. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you follow the documentation of P5020, it's like this is what it normally is, but yes. it could be changed and it took quite a while to figure out yeah. it actually didn't move it. Yeah, that's why you have to you have to go to your firmware to find out where it was put. That's right. Right. That's important. For every board. Because everything, everything else is, Cause there's what, is an offset from that. There's what the manufacturer recommends, and then there's what you do. So you can do what you want, right? <laughs> Depends how you want to uh, how you want to split up the address space on your design. And they decided to do it that way, whatever that way was, right? That magic number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that base address, where is that in the SDK? I don't believe it's in there. Do you? <laughs> What do you I'm sorry. I didn't. We're talking about the address of the uh, peripherals in the CPU and the integrated CPUs, where you got you know, got a USB right. controller, you got a Ethernet, you got SATA, you got uh, right. some yeah, kind of hardware engine, well, they DMA. There's a register set up in the PCI controller that will tell you this. Well, you, well, you get the base register, and then you feed off that it's the offset. Yeah, but where do you get the base at register? Oh, you have to pull the. Um, the, the guy who did the initial post, he's the guy that wrote that. So whatever incredibly low-level bootloader boot or yeah. firmware layer you're working with, that's the guy that's going to write that. Yes, yes. And that's where we, well, both of us hit this problem. Yeah. Where's it? And, and, and what's the number? What's the magic number, just right? Just trying to find yeah. it. Yeah. Documentation extensively talks about where everything is is an offset of the base. Yeah, you got to have the base. But you need to know where it yeah. starts. So to find the base, though, we don't have that anywhere except in U-boot source code. Well, yes and no. You can you can do a direct read of the base register on the PCI controller itself. You, well, how do you get to the PCI controller without the base? Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. These chips don't have like, these chips don't have, these chips don't have strong bus. This is all freescale stuff. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, see. <laughs> That, I genuinely don't know. It's a catch twenty two. Yeah, there's no there's you, no you just have to know. Yeah, you have to know. You have to beg for forgiveness and then we'll give you the The number. solution seemed to be that they didn't move it. It was it was the default. But that was that's one of the biggest challenges in looking at these chips. Yes. Okay, I see how the hardware is and I see how it can be implemented. A variety of different possible configurations. But what did they do under Amigo S for? Yes. You know. Yes. Uh, and the as only far as I can tell, answer I got is you, Buddha. <laughs> as far as I can tell, they left it alone. Okay. Like, like the hardware isn't even there. Yeah. And, you know, it just so yeah. it's, everything's default. But it's not on the wiki or anywhere else at the moment. Like I had the same issue with uh, SAM 460 because it's got integrated peripherals too. The PPC 460. Where did I get that base address? From? Good question. Did you I'm not telling anybody. <laughs> I got from U-Boot, <laughs> but it, because of U-Boot, luckily it's GPL, so, right. but still, it shouldn't be that hard. It should be like, oh, on there, right? Yeah. So, what I'm kind of imagining is uh, we should have a section here that says, if you're on this machine, it's this, this machine, it's this, this machine, it's this, and if you're looking for interrupts, interrupts start at blah, interrupts start at blah, and yeah, exactly. does, does, uh, does you write like locals into a defined scratch space? Like I know that in address X, the following locals will be written. Into a scratch space? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, it transfers that to the OS through a so space. I, I understand that, yeah. but I'm, I'm working with Mego OS. So I'm saying if, yeah. I, if I wanted to read, for example, some local that I wrote, including say the, the, the base register. Oh, you want to read it. I'm going to memory address yes. Yes. whatever, because I know the locals start here. Yeah. Uh, is that in our wonderful here? I don't see it. 
I mean, this is much higher level. Than you're talking about. Yeah, there's not in the, it's not in these environment variables. It's in a different spot. You're right. But it's right. got to write it to some defined memory location. Yeah, it has so to know where it does. So I just know where that scratch space is. That's a good so question. I never bothered to look because yeah. I got the magic number. Well, last you're just the best, but the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go look for the magic number? <laughs> uh, why is the why is the uh, uh, Ranger display a partial list of the environment variables? Sorry. Why does why does Ranger take and display a partial list of the environment variables? Uh, it's, it's not, it's not all. It displays everything the that the API gives it. That's the okay, answer. What, if the API the does API not supply it, uh, then it's not there. Yeah. So that's my always my end. Ranger doesn't lie. OS lies. <laughs> so have you figured out why it creates a temporary file over the network? No. Right. No, that's a driver thing. Some driver is going click and turning, make a temporary file somewhere. Yeah. 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 That's another thing. It never lies. <laughs> that's why I designed it that way so that I, I don't get any funny business, no workarounds, nothing like that. So you don't truncate the strings for mm -hmm. the uh, the environment variables either? No. They they, well, they, I truncate it like 512 bytes or something. I, I, I do truncate eventually. You know, chain together commands to do boot strings and, yeah. and stuff like that. Because I pick this number, a, right? Booting Linux. I pick some number that it'll just chop it off. Yeah, so it doesn't yeah. corrupt memory. Oh, <laughs> can you make it a little bigger? This. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Because yeah. When, you, when you're looking at the uh, I, I don't string of commands to do a, a boot <laughs> of like, you know, Linux or something like that into, yeah. into it, then you can't. You can see the, the boot command uh, from Amigo OS, but you can't see all of it. Oh, well, because it's short. Well, that's odd because no one's emailed me. <laughs> it's it's two, it's five times. <laughs> well, yeah, you can chain together a whole script yeah. of stuff that you need to do sometimes to get oh, yeah. to the widget. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I just nobody tells, tells me I don't fix my it, boot so. commands I've been playing with are are not fully displayed. They're there, but they're yeah. not all there. Now, so I want to look up something quick from Amigo OS. Well, that goes for all fields. All fields have a limit of something. I would like to talk to you about how you got to some of the information that, that goes on. Yes, yes it's quite fascinating. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> where, you, where you found all the pieces? Yes. yes it's good you're still stuff. looking. It's good stuff. Well, you're always still looking. <laughs> yeah. That's, that but, uh, 10 years. but uh, yeah, I guess we kind of got on a tangent. But, uh, yeah, back to PCI. We still need the base address to start this game. Well, this this isn't the uh, this isn't the same as integrated peripherals like we were talking. Right. About. No, this is just this is when you do find device. Yeah. Find device is the key. So if you if this works for you, find device, it's easy. But for us, we're talking in a situation there is no find device. Now make it work. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. If, if anyone doesn't know the integrated peripherals, um, you know the C. Does everybody know CPUs generally aren't alone anymore? They have all sorts <laughs> of stuff thrown in there. Right? Quite a bit of stuff. Yeah, consumer grade stuff anyway. There's a SATA controller in there. There's a there's a parallel port controller. Oh yeah, throw it in there. <laughs> That's that. When did that occur? 80s? Uh, 90s? It, it, no, actually. It Even before that? It, SOCs became popular in the early 90s. Oh okay. Okay. But, but embedded processors have had this sort of thing for a while. Oh yeah, picks right. Because right. you really right. want you want your IC count to be as low as possible. Yeah. So everything you can squeeze onto a single yeah. physical chip is always a solid choice. I think most people think Pentiums and such, right? Yeah. yeah. When they think chips. No. They're just used to it. <laughs> and uh <laughs> you know, people's refrigerators have these things now, so it's Yeah. It's yeah. Little, little. But, yeah, it became really popular in, in uh, non embedded yeah. yeah. It, it's, it works fine, but you got to have a different approach when you're writing drivers. The end result. So you got to get access to these peripherals somehow. And in my experience, actually, these integrated peripherals have so many bugs in them. Oh, oh, they are awful. <laughs> so they do for a living. So <laughs> now <laughs> they're just full of bugs. You ran around. <laughs> I don't know, it's like, do you test it at all before you ship the chip? I would say, I would say. No, that's why we have verification in here. So 
No, no, they're the first to go. No? No. Oh, well, we get the companies you're buying your stuff from. Yes. Oh, wow. As I won't mention uh, company names like Microchip, but uh, no, Lord, no. Thing, things like you know, whatever other company might have problems with their verification. <laughs> anyway, there's a reason they're a dollar each, okay? Anyway. <laughs> oh, these are so cheap, there's a reason. Uh, <laughs> So the other thing I want to mention here was the broken PCI-based address I.O. mask. It's broken. So if you're using 5330, you got the wrong number. If you're using that mask, it's wrong. You now have been notified. <laughs> now you say, okay, give me the right number. No, no, okay. <laughs> yeah, the right number is there, but uh, it'll be in the next version of the headers. So. <laughs> It's been corrected. So that, that, that flaw was discovered during the X5000 um, uh, port, this flaw in our, uh, in our API. So it's very important if you're a device record writer. Now I'm wondering, okay, uh, can I take the, the Wi-Fi card and plug it into X5000? Will it work? Probably not. I don't know if the guy knew this. From Neil. Neil. Yeah. It does not work. This is why. What? No. No, no. <laughs> the, the problem, no this, is, this isn't why. Oh, there's another reason. No, no, no. He can, he can still talk. To, he can still talk to the okay. on the car. So no. I mean, the, the, there's something level, even worse. Some, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, okay. It's something else. Okay. Okay. Well, that's step one. I, I, I think it's because I, I think it's because he's still um, on the X5000. He's uh, his start doesn't support the current era model. So yeah, he's yeah, he's he's, he's, he's waiting. So as soon as he lights that thing up, he's waiting. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. He's waiting for an error from the controller. Asphere does its first broadcast. He's never receiving it. Well, that's because he's pulling in the wrong place and it's going to drop on the floor. Yeah, yeah, that could happen. Wonders of drivers. Yes. yes. <laughs> this is stuff usually uh, everybody else takes for granted. Drivers are done, right? <laughs> not in the Amiga world. <laughs> Maybe you should stop filming while I start having a rant. It's not, not, not in the BSD world either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 There's lots of worlds it doesn't work. The the, uh, the non-mainstream, I don't know what you would use the term, the, the less popular. Uh, Any place where you can't pick up a binary blob from the, from the, uh, the manufacturer. The manufacturer. Yeah. yeah. Anywhere you can't get a blob from the manufacturer. Yeah, yeah that would be a good description. Yeah, that's good. So that, that's, uh, that was one thing I wanted to cover. Uh, how are we doing on time? <laughs> The clock says 1046. 1046. Okay, it's time to talk about lunch, Brian. <laughs> Since you're here. I'll get back to you on that. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> now, we, yeah, we were thinking about ordering something in in order to keep things going versus everyone disappear and come back in two hours kind of thing. I mean, you're still welcome to get your own lunch, but uh, we're going to try to shorten it down to like a one hour block, one and a half hour kind of thing, just to keep things moving. And I was talking to Brian a few days ago, saying, well, can, can we order something in? Can the hotel provide something? Because it's not catered event. <laughs> and I saw him in the back there. So that's that. Um, whew. Should I get into the juggler now, or, or should uh, we do something else? <laughs> the juggler is the biggest chunk. Of the, of the day, or the... Yeah, <laughs> that's the biggest chunk of time. Mm -hmm. time. Uh, and Hans, you had something else you wanted to, sh to present to do with more... Something about like automated testing. Yes. How, how much doing. time do you think uh, you require? Uh, should be less than an hour, for sure. An hour? Okay. Less. Well, we were talking a bunch, though. <laughs> well, if, you, if you break into, uh, he starts at, at, at 11 and ends at 12, you know, that, that works with Brian Green sending to deal with food. If you want to eat at 12, you want to eat later. Yeah, it's almost 11, yeah. 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 So, so. I mean, I could, of course, split it over a couple sections, because I, I, well, I could, I could start uh, I don't know. I'm kind of torn because 
I think the, the juggler, I could go on for like four hours, so. <laughs> I noticed you didn't put it on the, on the, on anything other than the hint that it was going to be talked about in the syllabus. You didn't do like a PCI, a PCI article where you actually added that to the wiki. You noticed that? Yeah. That's good. I'm glad people are paying attention. That's good. That's good. <laughs> There was some uh, copyright issues. <laughs> oh, okay. The lawyers were involved. <laughs> and that's part of the story. It's, it's a fascinating story. Isn't it? But I thought, well, maybe we should do something else. Oh, Brian, you're back. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Speaking of lunch, what, what's uh, <coughs> our solution? Here's, here are lists of things you can, people you can call and things you, you can order. And the restaurant guide. The restaurant guide. For ah. Look at that. So, yeah. that, so we can either uh, drive to these places or order from them, or yeah, I think they all have phone numbers, so you can you know give them a call. I'm pretty sure that a lot of some of them will deliver. Uh, I think uh, one time we got right, pizza, and several pizzas. Yeah, yeah. If you want to do that. that one. Yeah, on oh, Friday night. Pizza menus up front too. On Friday night, Saturday lunch, and Sunday lunch. Uh, lunch is on us. So Friday night's covered. And Sunday, Sunday, Saturday lunch and Sunday lunch. Saturday lunch and Sunday lunch are covered. Wow, wow. that's nice. Which is why you're only getting pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I find Jeez, no, I pizza. Pizza's a <laughs> staple <laughs> of, of uh, no, developers, I thought. No shawarma, no deli. And there's, there's one other thing I wanted to share with you guys. Yep. Uh, and this is the generosity of a contributor here. Uh, and it was a stock of graphics cards? No. Oh, <laughs> <That's right>. oh. <laughs> that contributor has to go home and get Bugs. it. This is our 20th year, and everybody gets an Emmy West. Woohoo! I should clap, I guess. I guess. I guess. I guess. <laughs> 20th year. So what, during the year, when you're drinking whatever you drink out of this, whether it's coffee or milk or tea or rum and coke or whatever, or whatever you remember that, us. What about that stinky stuff from last night, George? Well, that too. Whiskey. <laughs> whiskey in an Amy West mug. That sounds poetic. Oh, yeah. You can also use it all just to get them up. Boozing up. Yeah, probably I better than now. Nice. Same team. Probably better than now. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Talk to that man. <laughs> you want to fill it up with something? I'm slow. Oh, yeah, tonight. <laughs> <That's old. laughs> oh, you can do it soft. Yeah. Hard time figuring out the bag. <laughs> That's, good That's right. <laughs> oh, you got one. Hey, one thing you know is we've been operating. I got mine. Is that? Okay. okay. Do you? They're kind of little. <laughs> They're 11 ounces. <laughs> How much whiskey do you drink in the shot? <laughs> yeah. Now, everybody get one. Just, hey, are they dishwashers? Say, that's a question. Okay. They made it in America. They are. Yeah, they are. Well, maybe printed. They're printed in America. <laughs> that's right. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> You should have been here 21 years ago. Then you would have <laughs> known what was uh, the first one in 97 or 98? 98. 98 officially? Yeah. So this is the 20th show, not the 20th year. Ah, yes. That's a big difference. Yeah, yeah. We're not talking years. Yeah. No. 20 shows. 20 shows. So you're pretty good at it. 21. <laughs> That's right. And 20 years from now, we may do another pre <laughs> 20 more years to get another month. Or 20 shows, sorry. Uh, or, or whatever's usable at the time. Who knows? It may not be usable. Lovely. Yeah. 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 So I am young. You're still young. That's right. <laughs> We were just talking about how old we are. We're not elite. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so it, back to what we were going to do next. Uh, we got SDK browser, we got Michael's thing, and we got automated testing. Automated testing.
You want you want automated testing? Yes. You want it? I want it. You want it? Give it to me. Okay. <laughs> don't film that. <laughs> you want to do your bit, huh? Sure. You don't mind? Sure. Okay. You can use this machine, of course. I assume you have a slideshow or something. Wait, what's USB ports? Yep. Go to town. <laughs> Thank you. Where am I? Uh,
is this all running native? Sorry? Is this all run native on Amiga or is this? Well, Amiga can run, yeah, can yeah. run the script. Okay. I did try writing in yeah. uh, the Amiga DOS, but yeah. I gave up. So you just use the ABC show? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so then the make file is a really simple ROM test. Just build the target, execute the target. And then I, I can give you a copy. I've got a, I built a small example uh, with one test program that does almost nothing. Uh, just so you can use it as a starting point. Uh, so I've just got some quick, yeah, set, set this environment variable to past. I've got warnings that it's failed. Um, as I say, you don't really need to see this thing. I'll give it to you. Um, basically, this is this is what you do. You have your main program, you run your test, and at the end you check if you have warnings. And you say red code is red code have warnings. That will set the environment variable for you. You can turn it out, which is an error. The main script will tally up. Did it pass? Or with the warnings, did it fail? Now on to those floating point issues. I found particularly with the reciprocal instruction. I think the GPU, the GPU and the CPU either use different algorithms or different numbers of iterations. It's like if you got two iterations instead of three iterations of the Newton-Raphson method, then you will get different.